Hey guys, and welcome back to Bad Resales. I'm Natalie. And I'm Will. And in today's video, we're doing a Q&A. We put out a post that we wanted people to ask us questions. We got a lot of good questions about our reselling journey, about us, how we started, and just things about our reselling business in general. And we're going to answer all of these questions in a Q&A type of video format. So let's get into it. All right, so before we dive into the questions, if you're new here or if you don't know, Natalie is the full-time reseller in the relationship and I am just a part-time reseller. So keep that in mind when we're answering these questions. Mm -hmm. All right, first question. How long have you been reselling? How many hours a day do you work? What did you do before you became a full-time reseller? Okay, so we, in total, we've been reselling for four years full-time it's been three. I have a schedule that I created myself and I actually counted the hours that I do reselling. So not YouTube because YouTube is a whole other monster, but just reselling. I work about 21 hours a week, which is half a normal person's It's not week. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for YouTube as well, I would definitely have to up the amount of hours I put into reselling, which would lead to also an increase in Hey. It started off as a side hustle mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when we were still living in Philly, once we were able to pay our rent with just reselling, we're like, oh, yeah. this could be something. And this is before YouTube, mm -hmm. all that stuff. We were both working full-time jobs. So I worked at BMW in the internet department. So I was kind of like the middleman between the buyer and the salespeople. So that's what I did full-time when we started reselling as a side hustle. I'm still at T-Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> what stage was your business at when y'all went full-time resellers? Like we just said, we were able to pay our rent. So that was step number one. And then Natalie mm -hmm. lost her job. And we were like, what better time to just right. try this? Right. If anything, she's a smart gal. She'll get another job. But like, let's do this for us. And we took the leap and literally could not have been happier. Yeah. And we were making around like $1,800 at the time that I decided to go into full-time reselling. So we still had his full year, full-time salary. And then we had the additional side hustle reselling salary of around $1,800, like $1,500 to $2,000 a month. Profit. Yeah. So that's where the stage of our reselling journey was when I went full-time. I don't think I'll ever go full-time. I'll just go down to part-time because health benefits are uh -huh. ridiculous. And I just love having the steady paycheck coming mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. as a full-time reseller and no paycheck to fall back on. I, I couldn't do that myself. That yeah. takes a lot of cojones. What's cojones? Balls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, Nat and Will. Would you be, blah, 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 would be interested in how you met and what motivated you to resell? Take care. How we met, we met in college at my pregame party. She was wearing a cool lion shirt. I said, hey, cool shirt. It was actually a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we met and we had no idea what was in store for us. One of her friends hooked us up pretty much after that. Yeah, she was playing the little, what's it called? Cupid. Cupid. What was the next part of the question? what motivated you to resell oh so we didn't even know really about the reselling world until this one thrifter girl reached out to me and uh, she basically asked to collaborate because she did thrifting and reselling and i'm like wait what i clicked on her profile and she's just making money selling used clothing i'm like what is going on and i thought if she can do it we can do it. Oh yeah. We watched a few videos. We yeah. were out at Goodwill that next weekend. <laughs> and to give like some background, Natalie used to be like a brand ambassador mm -hmm. on Instagram. So that's what the thrifting girl wanted Natalie to do to promote her business. Exactly. Which is a great idea. Yeah. But we thought what a great way to get some extra income in on the side. We never thought we would go full time or at Ooh. least for me. We never thought it would go to that point, but it did. Yeah. Would you say a reseller makes as much as a full-time job if you're all in? Or is it more of a hobby? 
So in short, reselling can definitely be a full-time job, making you a full-time type of salary, but you have to put in the work and the hours. It's a simple job. It doesn't make it easy. And we do make a full-time income a normal, like a normal salary income a year doing reselling. Definitely start it off as a side hustle. Yes. Don't just go straight in. Agreed. This is my full-time job. For me, I would need to see, like, because I don't have the cojones, at least a year of consistent sales and the profit coming in, knowing that my business is sustainable. Agreed. At least six months. Yeah. So if you have the drive, and that's one thing I knew about Natalie, she has the drive and ambition to do things like this, to keep her disciplined and hold herself accountable. accountable. See me, I'd be napping right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say it's kind of lonely? I hear a lot of people saying no. that. No. No. She's a loner. When I like I, being alone. So when I'm I come home, at... she's like at the window. <laughs> <laughs> Only bad thing is there's no paid time off. No, but I, I do struggle to take days off where I don't work at all because I don't want to. If you take a day off from listing, you are messing with the algorithm on the platforms and it will affect your sales negatively. It has been proven over and over and over again. Every time we go on a road trip and we're gone for like three days and I don't list, boom, plummets sales in sales. are terrible. Plummets. So that's why I will never take just a full day off not listing. I have to get my listings up, but it's one hour of my day. So it's not a big deal. How many times a week do you guys sourcing and are these full day trips? Who does all the YouTube editing? Would you guys ever go outside of the Carolinas to thrift and see how it is in other locations? Pepsi or Coke? Mountain Dew, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to start with, we go thrifting about three times a week. Mm -hmm. We love to source during the week. We have just found it in our area mm -hmm. that they put out more racks because there's less customers in the store and yeah. they have to recover from the weekend, all them sales and stuff. And we spend an hour to two hours thrifting on those days to be inside the Google stores. It's either one store or two. Mm -hmm. It's really not a lot. I wouldn't say we really do full days of thrifting. No. Maybe like once a month we used to hit like three or four yeah. goodwill stores. Spent like six hours on that. Yeah, yeah, we haven't done that in a while. In terms of going outside of the Carolinas to go thrifting, I'm kind of nervous because we hear everybody complaining about the pricing of their Goodwills and thrift stores. But I think the neighboring states would all be kind of similar to ours. Yeah. It's a lot of work, effort, and time that goes into traveling. He works full time, so he can't just be like, oh yeah, let's just go. I can, but we gotta go on his schedule when he's off. We're not gonna go for one day. No, no, we like to do like at least like three days. Yeah, and it costs a lot of money to travel too, and then you gotta stay places. Maybe even rent a car because we don't have two Yeah, cars. I don't know why everybody thinks like we're living the lavish yeah. <laughs> life. We got two O fives, guys. O fives. We're about saving that money. Yeah. What are the pros and cons of reselling as a couple? I'm wanting to bring my husband on board my business, but don't even know where to start. That's a great question. We started out as a couple to resell. So it wasn't one starting out and then the other one coming on, but we have heard or know of people who has done it that way. But we started together and we both wanted it together. There are pros and cons. Not every couple can work together. So that doesn't necessarily have anything to mean with your relationship. It's just some people can't work together. Same with friends, can't work together, even though you're great friends. So it really comes down to your work compatibility, your work ethic, your discipline, and where you want the business to go, do you have the same ambition? Because if one is a workhorse and the other one is a couch potato and you're both reselling, one's going to get mad at the other. Causes the friction yeah. in the business. Like, why that, am I doing everything? Then that leads into the relationship. Yeah, and, yeah. But I would say a pro of reselling as a couple is you build something up together. Mm -hmm. It's your own business. And if it takes off, amazing. If it doesn't, whatever. But when we get that sale, me and Nat just look at each other and we celebrate together. Yes. Yeah. 50 bucks just made watching a show. Also, thrifting together is a lot more fun than thrifting solo. We do both. I go solo on many days and then if he has time off and we can go together, we go together. It's always more fun together, even though there are times if I have a lot of clients, it is fun to show him afterwards, but it's always more fun together. Yeah. 
So in terms of your latter part of that question, like how can I bring my husband into this? Does he want to? Don't he, force it. If he doesn't want to, then I don't think it's going to work out because he's not going to want to do the work. So you both have to be on the same boat, the same train, same boat. Yeah. Same car, same, same plane. <laughs> so does he want to do this? Why or why not? You can talk about it. But if this is something that he could be interested in, just bring him along with the fun part first all sourcing the first, yeah don't stick them on listing yet yeah or like okay you take care of the finances right now or you know inventory and all that stuff now go thrifting and if he finds something it might like ignite that adrenaline like oh wow and then you tell him oh my gosh babe that can be like 30 40 dollars and it costs two dollars he's gonna be like what so i would start there probably just bring him along your thrifting trips I would also say make sure the app is on his phone so he gets them sold comps coming through and when he hears oh. that cha-ching come through that first time I'll never forget like our first sale like oh, oh yeah. I just made $12 yeah, yeah. off a t-shirt <laughs> Yeah. It was the best feeling. Yeah. The feeling now isn't quite the same because it's a little old, but you still get those little endorphins that fire off like, yes. All right, so this one's directed towards Miss Natalie. Natalie, have you ever at any point thought of giving up on reselling? Has the effort ever been too much? Love and hugs from your friend Allison from Northern Ireland. So Allison, no, I have never even thought about quitting reselling it's just not been an option for me i'm not going back to a nine to five job after this there's just no way unless they offer me five hundred thousand dollars a year to work 20 hours a week <laughs> you know what yeah i'll do that <laughs> unless that's the case no why would i go work for someone else making about the same as i'm making now working 20 hours a week for myself there's just no way maybe yeah. it's because you have the best coworker. Has the effort ever been too much? No, there are times where I don't want to go thrift and like, I just don't feel like being here today. But when can you say, or when can you not say that about any other job? We all get tired of our jobs. Do you have a budget on how much you spend per month on inventory? No. no. <laughs> when we first started from the first few months, we just kept reinvesting the money. Yeah. And now we have a bankroll for the business mm -hmm. where that we just spend what we got to spend we're not mm -hmm. going to hold back because if there's a deal you capitalize if mm -hmm. there's a, a good brand you pick it up everybody's situation is different but i just recommend just set aside a good amount of money and just keep reinvesting mm -hmm. it into your business so you don't have to worry about a budget yeah so we just buy what we find and then we're going to make the money back and then profit it's definitely more tricky in the beginning where you're you may not be making all the profit tons of mistakes you know but it, once you keep going and you start getting those rolling in sales you will make the money back and then you will make profit and then you spend the profit on making more fines and, and investments and then you make profit from that and now your bank is now mm -hmm. going up all right we have pam's paradise assuming that it's garage sale time of the year Will you be switching it up now and then to see what you could find at garage and community sales, any estate sales in your future or storage lockers? We don't have much luck with garage sales anymore. At this point, I hate them. It's all knickknacks now. I, I know there's the bearded thrifter around here that does very well, but he's more into the hard good stuff. Mm. We are more clothing. Right, and shoes. And shoes, and it just, our first year here. Was amazing. Yeah. And then after that, it was just... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. And the prices on yard sales too have just gone up. Don't you want to get rid of your stuff? But it's hard to come by clothing. First of all, clothing just in general. Yeah, then mm. quality Yeah, clothing. yeah, that what we would pick up. So I've spent so many hours driving around with zero fines. And it just gets to the point where I'm wasting my time, my gas, my energy on nothing. Yeah. And in terms of estate sales, I look, but none of them look too appealing to us. Mm -hmm. It's usually, I don't know what these companies are doing, but they get rid of the clothes. They just donate it to Goodwill right. or they already have a buyer. I've reached out to a few companies. No one gets back to me saying that I will just bulk buy their clothes without even looking as long as they give me a good price. Mm -hmm. With 
storage lockers. I've always wanted to do one, mm -hmm. but we don't have a truck. I don't want to rent mm -hmm. a truck, and it's a lot of crap yeah. that's probably in there. So is it really going to be worth all that time and money that we spend on getting it and all this stuff? To so. break even. Yeah. Hopefully. Hey Nat and Will, how many hours do you guys spend on your eBay business? What does the breakdown look like with sourcing, listing, shipping, etc.? So we obviously sell on multiple platforms. So I guess this will kind of go for all, all the platforms. So four different platforms. I just handle eBay with the listing and answering inquiries. Yeah. I would say I list about 20 minutes each day. That's about 10 items because they're already preloaded for Natalie. Yeah, I make the listing and then he finishes the listing on eBay while I do the other platforms. So in terms of my day, being a full-time reseller, I list one hour a day, every single day. And I take photos pretty much every single day for one hour. So that's two hours. Sourcing, so going out to thrift is three times a week, spend about one to two hours per time. So between three and six hours on that. Packing the packages that we sold Monday, Wednesday, Friday takes between 30 and 30 minutes and an hour, depending on how many sales we have. So whatever that adds up to, that would be the total. So for me, it's about 21 hours a week. All right, this one is from Alex. It's a long guy. I'm just going to paraphrase it real quick. Hey there, team. I would love to know your original story. Did you start with eBay or a different platform? So me and Natalie, we started with eBay and Macari. And then they oh, ask, what did you sell first? First item we sold was a Vans t-shirt. Oh, with a big skull and a rose. Omar Kari? Yeah. We packed it. like That as, day. That as day, soon as we did sell, we're packing it. And then I ran to the mailbox <laughs> and shipped it all. What were your initial setbacks and lessons learned from your first year? So one of the biggest obstacles that Natalie had was just being intimidated by shipping. Oh my God, so scary. We almost didn't even <laughs> get into it because of how nervous she was. She was really freaking out. And I was like, I'll watch a video or two. Like, <laughs> we'll figure this out. It's so easy. <laughs> That's the easiest part of the job now. We use a uh, pirate ship dot com yep. on eBay. As for Mercari, Depop, and Poshmark, they provide their own shipping labels and we use their shipping labels. Another thing that in the first year, biggest thing I learned was sell-through rate. We would go to the bins, pick up something that had one sold comp. Did we even look at the sold comp? I think that was like the listed comps. Oh yeah. Because we didn't know there was a little filter button on eBay where you can click sold comps. Yeah, you're so right. So we just went on whatever listed and I could list that t-shirt for $150. Doesn't mean it's gonna sell for $150. This one would sell. No. That was it? Uh, one more. Okay. So this one is from Will I Am. What is it like working with the best coworker? Does he say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, that sums up today's q and a video many good questions there Great. so this was a lot of fun we'll definitely do one of these again in the future maybe you know in a few months from now thank you guys yeah. for your questions yes. by the way that yes. was very nice of you and it just brought back some memories <laughs> yeah as usual don't forget to leave that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys on the next one